He's also an educator, you know. He teaches a lot of drummers back in New Orleans. So I'm going to turn around the world. That's right. But he has his own program in New Orleans. Here's Mr. Terrence of the Higgins. And guess what? He is also a McDonald's All-American. He's going by the name of Swamp Grease, y'all. Swamp Grease, Terrence Higgins. Donald's thing was 20 years ago, <laughs> or more. Anyway, um, uh, good good afternoon, y'all. How y'all doing? <laughs> Having a good time so far? Yeah. Y'all taking it all in? Yeah. It's a lot of information here. Um, I like to give it up to the Dirty Dozen Brass Band. Though. These guys are the guys that really um, push the envelope in terms of New Orleans brass band music. Uh, traditionally, this setup comprised of a traditional brass, brass band setup, which had two drummers. So one guy played the bass drum with a cymbal and a, uh, a hanger beater, a coat hanger beater. And uh, it was mounted on top of the bass drum. And then the other guy, excuse me guys, excuse me, excuse me, this is some important information. Uh, and then the other guy would play snare drum. Um, and that would be the rhythm section along with the Susan phone. Uh, but the Dirty Dozen, as you know, they, uh, they went against the grain in a whole lot of ways in terms of the brass band movement. They even changed the repertoire that, uh, the tunes that brass bands played on the street. And today, a lot of the younger brass bands kind of model after the Dirty Dozen brass band. Um, they play a lot of hip hop, rock, and blues. And the Dozen was in part responsible for most of that. And um, so as they changed the music, the tempo changed, the rhythms changed, and everything changed about it. I mean, traditionally this is a brass band, so it's street music. You know, we, this, this, this is music that's played in the streets of New Orleans, you know what I'm saying? They took it to the stage, you know, and started doing like concert tours with rock and roll artists and stuff like that. But back to the rhythm of it, um, when the, dozen, when the Dozen came along, prior to that, you might have heard a beat on the street that would sound like this. This is what you call strutting at a second line. And that's pretty much a basic second line beat. There's a bunch of different variations of it and a, a, a lot of different interpretations of that. But that's pretty much what you heard prior to the dozen. And when they came, when they hit the streets, everything changed. The beat changed, the tempo changed, and it started sounding stuff like something like this. The drums changed. <laughs> dancers and revelers, you know, guys would be doing some amazing dancing. In New Orleans, along with the second line tradition, there's a few different things that go along with that. It's not only the music that's in, inside of the culture, but it's also a dance that happens um, at a second line. And the dance is called the second line, or second line E. And Kirk Joseph is gonna show you a little bit of how the second line thing go. From a traditional perspective, and then from the Dirty Dozen perspective. So here it is, the second line dance. Here we go, Kurt Dillard. Traditional, traditional first? Okay, you must have a handkerchief. The handkerchief is also used for wiping your perspiration off while you walk in the street, because it's so hot in the lawns. And the sun, too, yeah, don't run for the sun. So this is pretty much, this is, like Terrence is saying, the beat that he's playing is more of a traditional side of things, where it's a little bit more calmer, you know. And you were still dancing, don't get me wrong. You still enjoyed yeah. yourself. 
And, and he's not really being as animated as he really could be. Yeah. Because in the streets of New Orleans, those guys are really animated. You might see guys jumping on top of rooftops, yeah. on uh, on climbing up the light poles, jumping on top of cars. Doing the alligator underneath a car. Crawling on the street. I mean, it's, it's a really... If you don't understand it, it might be kind of weird. You might think these guys are nuts. But it's a really a spiritual thing and a spiritual connection uh, inside of the culture. So you got to kind of be from that and kind of understand what's really happening to it. Okay. Yeah, okay, so yeah, we're probably getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Good, good observation, Jay. This is Jay Gecker on the guitar. From, where are you from? If the question again, Jay. He's from Atlanta, Georgia. He moved to New Orleans and he, he just pretty much joined the band and he's one of the cats, you know. But um, the second line culture, all right. Second line culture, the term second line has several different meanings. One meaning would be the dance that is associated with the brass band culture. The uh, next, the another meaning would be an event. If you go every Sunday, uh, certain social and pleasure clubs may have what they call uh, a second line which is an event that a parade is their way of celebrating different events. It may be a, a private event, a funeral, or whatever, and that's called a second line. Now, the term second line really, 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 truly came from a funeral procession in New Orleans. And uh, Kirk might can uh, help me out with this. Yeah. The, the first line is the family and the body. That's right. And the second line would be Kirk. It's the second runners, the guy that the guys that are behind that, friends, the revelers, the revelers, the mourners, and all the extra people. So that's where the term exactly. second line came from. There's also one more thing. Kevin would like to add. Oh, <laughs> no. Well, there's also a, a, a terminology for the Mardi Gras Indians, you know, because back then they, they used to have different tribes, and they actually used to war between the different tribes. So what you would have is like the first line would be the warring line, and there would be a second line, a second wave, that would be the ambush line, you know? And, and when you're talking about Indians, that, that, that would be, see, second line can mean so many different things in New Orleans. So you have to watch out. If you see some Indians dancing, if you see things break out, make sure they're the opposite way. And there's another form of second line, which actually was the inception, way to the days before the Facebook and the internet, we had like horse and carriages. And we had some instruments, you know, in, this, in the different areas of the city of New Orleans, it's broken up into wards. We have counties, and New Orleans had wards. And when someone wanted to give a party, in order to promote the party and to sell a party and to let everybody know, you had to actually go around town and spread the word. And so you have someone on the back of a pickup truck, a back of a, a horse-drawn wagon on the hay, which most likely was a trombone. When the trombone turned out to come tailgating. You know, and this is where this comes from. And so what you had is you had an advertisement of a party and dance coming on, and when you get to the dividing line in another section of the city, the other side of the city might not like the people from this side. So you need your second line is to protect your butt. <laughs> so that was another form of second line, but it it evolved until what we have today. And I'm gonna let Terrence finish it. Hey, that, that was a pretty good, that's like the first I heard of that one, but that's pretty good. See, you, see, the thing about New Orleans, they got all these real deep inside sources of information that, like a cat from my generation, may not know. Like, he's, he's from an uh, earlier generation, and that's something that was passed down to him, the information that he know, and tells that it educated me just now. So I, I, I had my first time hearing that, but that was a good one. Well, yeah, I mean, you got to understand, in New Orleans, this the, the second line culture in New Orleans it borders race, race lines. I mean, there's no way else to really explain it. There's a couple of what I call um, uh, African, African American subcultures inside of New Orleans. One being the brass band culture and another one being the Mardi Gras Indian culture, which is kind of related but different. And there's stories behind both of them. And also the classical culture. Well, that's another thing. I'm just talking about the, the two on the surface. He's going way deep. See, that's information that's... But, you know what I'm saying? So there's the Mardi Gras Indian culture, and then there's the brass band um, second line culture. So these, I call them African-American subcultures within New Orleans. And it's deep in the African-American communities. So you would kind of really have to do a lot of research 
to really get it. And you know, and then you talk about Second Line, a New Orleans traditional jazz versus Dixieland. You talk about Zydeco versus Cajun. You know, there's different racial ramifications in each. It's pretty much the same music, but different. You understand what I'm saying? Music is music. You get it? Yeah. All right. But anyway, that's enough of that information. But back to the beat. Like I said, the dozens kind of flipped the whole script on the music. And let's do a tune. Uh, we could do a, like Blackbird Special, which was one of the dozens kind of hit songs that really changed, uh, was the focal point in the change of the music in the world. Blackbird Special. Like that. And um, get your lips warmed up, because we're going to invite some of you all up here. Have we ever got an instrument? You're welcome to join us. We're going to play this tune here now. So get your chops ready. You're going to hear how hot your lips are. This is actually when we start taking it to another song. We speed up the music and just dance, just dance to this music, y'all, and just leave. And everyone is individual. It's an individual concept everyone performs, y'all. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> 